In this video, we're going to go over an example of the binomial distribution where we're actually going to be calculating some probabilities. So we are told that an allergy medicine was found to be effective in 72% of participants during clinical trials. In a group of 25 individuals, what we want to know first is what's the probability that the medication was effective for exactly 13 individuals. We could do this by hand. However, we would have to utilize the formula. And the formula in this case would look like this. And I'm going to write it out, but we're not going to actually do it. In fact, some may have seen this before, but this is the binomial, whoops, 72, let's see, 0.28 and 12. We would have to put that in our calculator. This is, wouldn't be too bad, 0.72 to the 13th times, there's a multiplication in there, times 0.28 to the 12th, that wouldn't be too bad. However, this 25 to the 13, we're not going to go over. This is what's called a combination, and combinations are not part of the, you know, the course content for our statistics class. So what we're going to do instead is to write out all the pieces of information that are, that are essential, and then we're going to put those into StatCrunch and have StatCrunch calculate for us. So first, we need to remember that when we're talking about a binomial distribution and we're calculating probabilities, that we need to have n, we need to figure out what p is, and we need to figure out what q is. n is the number of trials, is the number of individuals that are, in this case, and the individuals that we are taking from. So in this case, our n is 25 times. It's like we are sampling 25 individuals. P is the number or the, the probability associated with a success. So we're going to associate with if the drug is effective in the individual, then we count it as a success. Remember, success isn't always positive. It's just what we mean when we're looking for a particular outcome. So we're going to use 72% the probability that we randomly select someone and that drug is effective is going to be 0.72. And then that means our Q is going to be 1 minus P. So 1 minus 0.72, that's going to be 0.28. So our Q is 0.28. And that is the probability of quote-unquote failure. So we're looking for what's the probability that the medication was effective for exactly 13 individuals. We're looking for the probability that the medication was uh, worked for exactly 13. So what we're looking for is the probability that x is equal to 13. x is the number of observations that we're looking for. Let's open StatCrunch and put this information in. So in StatCrunch, I'm going to open StatCrunch here. And we're going to go into the calculators, so stat, calculators, and binomial. We need to go into the options, and then, oh, oh, I'm sorry, it's actually all down here. Everything that we need to do is actually down here. I thought we were going to need to go into the options. N is the number of trials, so we have 25 independent trials. The probability of success is 0.72, and we're looking for the probability equal to, we want to know exactly 13 individuals, and I hit compute, and there we go. The probability of having exactly 13 individuals have it be successful out of 25 if the probability of individual success is 0.72. Here we have approximately 0.0168. If we were to round that to, let's say, the hundredth place, it would be about 0.02. So I'm going to go back and write... 0.02. That's the probability that this drug is effective for exactly 13 individuals. Let's look at problem two. What is the probability that the drug was effective for at most 13 individuals? So what we're saying here is that what about, okay, 13 individuals, we found that, that's 2%, but at most 13 means it could have also been effective for 12, 11, 10, it could have been effective for 2, 1, or 0. So we're looking for the sum of all the individual probabilities of 0 through 13. 
In other words, what's the probability of x being the observation we observe in an outcome less than or equal to 13? I know I'm including 13, the equal to here, because it says at most 13, so 13 would be included. Thankfully, the only thing I need to do here in StackCrunch, if I open up StackCrunch, is change my inequality sign, my equal sign to an inequality sign. I already know the number of trials. I know the probability of each individual success. And here, I want to know the probability that it's not equal to, but at most, so 13 or less. Compute. Make sure you definitely hit compute here. And here, it's equal to 0 0.0264. I guess we should have rounded because it's actually very similar. It's very similar here. So 0 0.026. So if we go back, the probability less than or equal to is 0 0.026. So it's only a little bit higher. So it's only the probability that it was effective for 13 or less was actually very, very little compared to having it be exactly 13 individuals. So that's interesting. Now down here, the manufacturer claims that the medication will work for at least 23 individuals. So again, we want to see what's the probability of this result and is this a likely result? We still have the same N, we still have the same P and Q. What we're looking for now is the probability that our observation, our X, if it's at least 23, then it would be greater than or equal to 23. So we're looking for the probability where our, our outcome, we're looking for an event where our event is greater than or equal to 23 successes. So let's go back. We're going to change our X value not to be 13, but we're going to change that to be 23. And we're going to change our less than or equal to sign. We're going to change that to greater than or equal to. We're going to compute. It's already here. 0 0.015. These are very, very close, as you can tell here. 0 0.015. So I'm going to write that out. 0 0.015. One, five. It's actually very close to the others. If we were to round this to the hundredth place, it would still be 0 0.02. I assure you that's just a coincidence that all these are very close together. However, if we were to calculate something like what's the probability of having 15 or more or 14 or more, you would notice that these would be very different probabilities. So let's answer this question. The probability of this result, at least 23, is 0 0.015. Is this likely? Remember, when we talk about whether or not something is likely or not, we're looking at whether or not the probability is less than 0.05. If the probability is less than 0.05, then we would call it unlikely. It's unlikely to happen. So our probability is less than 0.05, so therefore, is this likely? I would say no, because the probability is less than 0.05, which is a very small probability. The last thing I want to do is to look at this graph, and I want you to notice that if you were to observe this, this is telling you, this x-axis here is telling you the number of successes, and the y-axis here is the probability. So if you look at 15, let's find the probability of having exactly 15. If I put in exactly 15, you're going to notice that that column is going to light up, and it's approximately 0.07. That's right here, approximately 0.07. If I wanted to say greater than or equal to 15, you're going to notice all of the ones, all the columns here to the right, all of those bars lit up red because we're including all of those. So we would sum all of those probabilities. We'd sum 0.07, and this one looks like it's about 0 0.11, 0 0.15. We would sum all of these until we get approximately 0.94, approximately. So this is kind of leading us into what we will see eventually as a continuous probability distribution. Here we are able to add all the columns. We're able to add all of the values of these, these bars, but we won't be able to do that shortly.